to another video from stageanalysis.net. Today's video is the weekend update of the major US stock market indexes indicators, where I'll go through the major US stock market indexes plus the key market breadth indicators, including the bullish percent index, the new high and new lows indicators, the advanced decline line indicators, the percentage of stocks above the key moving averages, and some custom indicators exclusive to stageanalysis.net, including the sector breadth chart with the relative performance rankings of the major sectors and the point and figure breakouts minus breakdown charts. The purpose of this weekly market breadth update is to help determine where stocks will go next based on the combined signals of all of the market breadth indicators, which is referred to in the stage analysis method as the weight of evidence. To see more of the market breadth indicator charts and regular stocks watch lists, go to stageanalysis.net. And to get all of our latest videos, subscribe to the YouTube channel and please hit the like button below the video on the YouTube page and leave any comments below. Okay, a quick disclaimer. All stock charts and ideas are presented for educational purposes only, so always do your own research before making any trades. Let's begin. So let's start this week with a look at the S&P 500. As you can see, we had another massive move down this week. We've had three or four weeks now of of liquidation type selling where we've knifed through all the major support levels and this this has happened on every single index and obviously every single stock chart imaginable that you can think of there's there's not many that have, have been safe it's bar some of the bond charts and um, physical gold itself which even this week as you'll see later on in the video got got hit both of those got hit this week with some liquidation type selling so We've obviously this week was we finished the week on the SP 500 down another nine percent basically, but we obviously recovered around half of that with with a strong bounce in the last day of the week with a almost ten percent move on the day on Friday. So potential for a short term low is definitely there with this kind of price action and the the sheer strength of the move over the last three or four weeks in the short amount of time so obviously we'll see what what happens but yes we're, we're certainly got potential for a short-term bounce but obviously we are well in stage four territory on every single chart so but in the major stock charts at least so looking over at the the dow industrials we we broke below the 2018 low even this week and managed to pull back on the friday again to close back above it so, but this remains down what a strong way, 20-30% over the last couple of weeks. So the Nasdaq has been performing better than most. It's obviously the Nasdaq 100 and Nasdaq Composite have both outperformed the, the other stock markets, which obviously has a majority of healthcare stocks and tech stocks compared to the MYSC which is more financials and industrials. So this, this is outperformed, as you can see, and it's still actually quite close to its 30-week moving average, which is still slightly rising here. Um, and, and as you can see from the relative performance versus the SP 500, that's been it's still pushing to new highs here. So the NASDAQ has definitely been the stronger of the stock markets. Um, the small caps obviously been underperforming since late 2018 and have continued to underperform. There's no, not a huge amount of difference between the, the actual price action percentage differences, but it was it was an already weak area and it's continued to be weak and is well below its 2018 low currently and didn't have such a strong bounce at the end of the week. So it remains possibly the, the weakest area of the market. So moving on. So let's next look at the um, percentage of stocks above the 150 day moving average. So this is the, the sector breadth charts that I do each week. I, I look at each sector and calculate the percentage of stocks above their 100, above and below their 150 day moving average and calculate the percentage of stocks. So Currently, the majority are below 20%, as you can see. Well, every single sector is below 20% now, with the majority below 10% even, which is unheard of except for in times of extreme panic. So, obviously, that's telling you a very big story here. Um, this The buy signal on this indicator is when we start to see sectors moving back out when they've 
been in the oversold area for a while and then they start to move back out above the key 30% level here. So be watching that closely, but it can often take many months during a, a real bear market or real crisis. So, but in, in short term pullbacks, you can often knife below it and then qu quickly pop back above. But we've, we've been below for a good few weeks now, so this could drag out for a while longer, but that's one area I'll be watching. The, the actual table, this shows the percentages. So healthcare is currently the strongest sector with 19, percent of stocks above their 150 day moving average still whereas basic materials has hit 1.69 percent which basically almost every stock in the basic material sector is below its 150 day moving average now so in stage three or four and it's similar in energy which has been the weakest sector all year so basic materials has only overtaken it this week for the first time but energy has been the weakest sector all year and has been in stage four for a long time and financials is also unheard of levels here, except for during some extreme events. So I don't have data going back over the previous times because I only started doing this a few years ago in terms of covering this. So, but looking at longer term actual bullish percent charts and, and things like that, these, these kind of levels are only seen during extreme times. Uh, like 2008 lows, the 987, possibly the 2011 lows. So, um, but as you can see, like every sector is doing pretty terribly currently. So chances of a short term bounce obviously seem high as lots of stocks are extremely oversold. But when that comes, not sure. It may already have begun on Friday, but we'll let the price action tell us. Okay, next. Next, we've got the um, seven to ten year treasury chart. This this had been outperforming for the last last month with making new highs for the last four weeks, but this week we saw a strong reversal, which in in terms of the treasury charts is really really unheard of. Like you don't you don't see this very often at all. Like the the magnitude of the move was was huge. So what was actually going on there? is unclear we got similar in gold again magnitude of the mood 10 10 percent in the week type nine 9.31 percent there like you don't get that in spot gold in a normal week spot gold is quite sedate its average weekly range is well its average true range is probably like two or three percent a week so a 10 percent move in a single week is is pretty rare this with this and these were the two strongest areas of the market and they were both in stage two still, and they were possibly the, one of the only remaining areas of stage two, So, which the treasury is still remaining as it, it bounced off of its 10-week moving average there. But gold closed the week below a flattening 30-week moving average here and below the breakout level, so we've got a potential move to stage 3A here. It's unclear yet. We may get a rebound, and it may recover, but... There's potential that we've we've moved into stage the very very early stages of stage three here, but we will see what's going on. This this could be due to liquidation in other areas of the market, margin calls, like who knows what happened. Like you could, someone could have had to liquidate their position in gold in order to pay off debts in other areas of the market because obviously all of the force selling like. There's no way of knowing really, and that will only come out down the line in, in the years to come when people tell what actually happened during this period. But for now, all we can do is rely on the charts. And so Treasuries remains in stage two, even though it had a obviously a huge reversal move, and gold is potentially moving into stage three A here. So we've got oil down the bottom here. We had a, a gap breakdown below into it was already it already moved into stage four the week before and we had a 23 percent gap down here it was down 30 percent at one point early in the week after the headlines from the weekend before and it it didn't recover much so obviously stage four in um in light crude oil there copper it attempted the stage four breakdown and it did close slightly below the previous low so but in terms of it's it's still managing to outperform the S and P currently, but it is at the very lows of its stage one range here. Potential for a wick off type spring maybe, 
it could recover and swing back up. But obviously, at the moment, there's danger of a full-on stage four breakdown in copper there. Okay, this is uh, gold versus the S&P 500 chart. Um, it's a 30-year chart. So I wanted to have a look at this because, obviously, it's, we've had an interesting change recently with obviously the market's moving down and gold holding up we've got the um, first stage 2a breakout in the gold monthly chart ratio versus the S&P 500 since 2001 as you can see this obviously when you have a declining um, 30 month moving average and this and it's actually broken above obviously a near term near term high so we haven't seen this since the um, 2012-2013 breakdown so this is the first time it's got above there we obviously haven't closed the month yet but we obviously this is attempt the ratio is attempting a stage 2a breakout for the first time obviously in about 19 years so it's an interesting one next we're going to have a look at the the 20 year chart of the US Treasury versus the S&P 500 this one I've highlighted a um, number of past areas and so I think this is interesting in terms of what's going on at the moment so the, when the treasury chart obviously moves above a, a near-term high and obviously breaks out it's normally during obviously a stage 4 decline in the market like a serious stage 4 decline so obviously we we are at a point at the moment although we've not closed the month where we're it's attempting to make the breakout above the obviously the 2018 swing high here and moving average there so you've got a potential stage 2a breakout in in this ratio which obviously is not a good sign for the market it obviously indicates obviously a longer term bear phase so obviously we'll see how this how this goes uh, next we're going to zoom back in and back into the normal time frames the uh, last couple of years and we're back in this is the MYSC on the left the MYSC bullish percent index um, as I highlighted over the last few weeks, this has declined dramatically. Like it's obviously levels levels we don't see very often at all. Uh, we're down to 7.38% in the MYSC Bulls Percent Index, and this is the percentage of stocks on a um, point and figure buy signal. The um, charts below are the percentage of stocks above their 200 day, 150 day, and 50 day moving averages. So these are also reached obviously levels that we don't see very often at all. We've got 7%, 6%, 4% in the MYC and um, the NASDAQ on the right over here seeing similar levels. We've got the bullish percent index of the NASDAQ at 11% here, 12% on the percentage of stocks above their 200 day moving average, 11% of the 150 day and 5% on the 50 day. So these levels are, are very rare. So I, I've created the 20 year chart as well so we could have a look at this and give it a bit of context over a longer time period so in terms of the the bullish percent indexes as you can see this is in the last 20 years we haven't seen this level since the 2008 um near the the end of the 2008 lows so before it rebounded as you can see the the 2009 low which was actually ultimate low for the the markets um, in both cases was obviously higher so we we're actually at more of panic levels currently but in the past this didn't indicate the low of the market this was actually where the market the market did actually rebound and then grind lower even lower again so but as you can see from the um, the percentage of stocks above the 200 day moving average and the 150 day moving average we remained down at this level for a good good few months before the ultimate low so the actual buy point was the eventual breakout back above up here in in all three indicators so you see the 50 day made a made a breakout in 2000 at the end of 2008 and then pulled back down to these levels again and obviously the second the second go with the confirmation of the longer term indicators was actually where we got the buy point so and the same in the in the nasdaq obviously the 50 day made it made a breakout back above the, the key 30 percent level but pulled back below it again before ultimately breaking out and with these medium and longer term indicators following through as well and the bullish percent index obviously we didn't get the 
the full breakout again back above these levels until obviously the springtime in 2019 um, not 2019 2009 so obviously where we are at the moment has only been reached before in the last 20 years um, during the end part of 2008 so hopefully that gives a bit of context to where we where we could be currently but obviously history is not a guarantee that we'll repeat the same thing again we could we could obviously snap back or we could continue lower we we don't know but i've just given a bit of context in terms of history does like to repeat itself so we'll see how we go uh, next we've got the advanced decline line issues as highlighted a few weeks back this is obviously moved to lower and with the moving averages pointing pointing down now the 50 day moving average here the Momentum index, the 10 day momentum index here has, has made a low and we've had a, a small breakout from this low back here. It's moving back towards its more normal levels, but it's still at extreme levels currently. The 200 day momentum index, which is the one from that Stan Weinstein mentions in his books, um, broke down obviously a number of weeks ago and it remains obviously at lower levels here. So it remains in bear, on a bearish signal. The the cumulative 10 and 30 day EMAs over here, which is of the cumulative line, which you can see over here, obviously had a crossover back in at near the end of February there, and we remain we remain obviously on a bearish signal there. The MIC um, McClellan summation index also remains bearish below its zero line here. The um, McClellan oscillator seems to be as making similar noises to the 10 day moving average momentum index and it's obviously made a short term bottom here and is, is attempting to spring back. Let's have a look at the new high new lows charts next. I've included the 20 year chart here to again give a bit of context to the greater move. So we're at levels only seen during the end of the 2008 period, so at the end of a long decline for the market. So obviously compared to currently, we've only had a very, very short decline of a month. So the 2008 one had been going on since obviously the latter part of 2007. So with obviously lots of strong moves there. So that was after it got only got to these levels after a year of declining where people started to obviously panic and stocks like rushed lower but we we've got there very quickly so we we may not be in for a drawn out bear market we may well obviously be near to a potential low but we will again we will see we will let the indicators guide us and the price action but at the moment this level is in the last 20 years has only been seen at the near the end of 2008 which as I said previously was not the end of the bear market the bear market didn't end until uh, March 2009 so we did see a lower low but the indicator obviously gave us a stronger divergence at that point with with a much smaller level and obviously currently we're still making lower lows so we're not there yet um, let's have a look on the right. So on the right hand side here, we've got the um, the cumulative new highs, new lows, which has knifed for its moving average over the last few weeks, and we're now further below it were than we were extended when we were above it. So that's it's looking quite extreme currently, but obviously you can't read much more into that than it's bearish. And below you've got the MYSC and the Nasdaq. Um, new highs and new lows as it's split out into individuals. The grey is the new highs and the red is the new lows. So obviously we're still still making higher peaks here. So until we start seeing divergences, obviously we won't be getting too enthusiastic. What's next? Next, this is one of the custom charts that I do. This is the cumulative point and figure breakouts minus breakdowns in the US market. I do each day. It's tallies up and basically it's the number of um, point and figure double top breakouts minus the number of point and figure double bottom breakdowns and so this has had some dramatic falls in the last last week or so um, it was close to close to 4,000 breakdowns this week which obviously the market only has around 5,000 stocks listed so practically um, three quarters of the market had a breakdown this week which has 
is obviously unprecedented except for in times of extreme panic like 1987 and we, we I'm not even sure if we saw that during 2008 I don't have the data for that but obviously as you can see from the 2018 decline which was was quite extreme itself in terms of the speed of it and um, this is this is far outpaced that and we've we've now closed the week at new lows and, and Friday's bounce didn't even make a dent in the new high new lows we actually made a, a new low so obviously that hasn't that's not given us any indications yet that we should be doing anything other than remaining at risk off but so let's get back so overall what are what's the weight of evidence telling us from all of this so everything generally remains on a fairly bearish signal we've got a few short term bounces going on obviously and indicated in the price action on friday as well so at the moment the weight of evidence remains deeply negative at extremely oversold levels so we could well see see some short term bounces but whether it's the ultimate low obviously as we said from the looking at the historical charts of like the MYC bullish percent and obviously advanced decline lines and new high new lows etc like it it doesn't look like it's the new the, the ultimate low yet we so we could obviously see a retest of this this week's low at some point in the future although we could obviously rebound strongly and we we are in stage four decline in the market so currently and in stage floor and uh, in stage four the the rebounds are, are very very strong so we could obviously see some strong bounces before we actually see the ultimate low and the ultimate low might we might have already seen it, but who knows? But so at the moment, the weight of evidence remains in a risk-off situation. So until we get some stronger signals from the market breadth, I'll be staying to the sidelines as much as possible. So, okay, I hope that helps. And uh, until the next one, um, remember to subscribe to the YouTube channel and please go to stageanalysis.net for obviously our regular watch lists and um, other market breadth charts. So thanks for watching, see you on the next one.